call for two permanent seats with veto power and five non-permanent seats for Africa. I'm a king, yes, I'm a king, go at think. The current composition of the Security Council does not reflect the world in which we live. On the 75th anniversary of the UN, we repeat our call for greater representation of African countries on the Security Council and that this be taken up with urgency at the intergovernmental negotiations. It is only through a reformed and inclusive UN Security Council that we will be able to collectively resolve some of the world's most protracted conflicts. Malawi, therefore, reiterates the call for agent agency in advancing these reforms with full representation of Africa in line with the Zulwini consensus of the African Union. For the avoidance of doubt, we call for two permanent seats with veto power and five non-permanent seats for Africa. We need a UN that fully meets Africa's needs in peace processes, which can only be achieved if Africa is involved in making such decisions. The reforms are long overdue. Yes, we should have arguments about the UN and its agencies and their roles, but after 75 years, the arguments should be like the ones we have in our families and not about their very existence. We should correct the long-standing injustice that the current structure and composition of the UN, particularly the Security Council, represents for the nations of Africa. Established in those far-off days of 1945, membership of the Council does not presently reflect the realities of the 21st century. The time has come for the adoption and endorsement of Africa's common position on UN reform, as set out in the El Zawini Consensus, so we can create a modern United Nations fit for purpose in our time. Our United Nations will be strengthened when we all feel well represented and have a say in the decision-making process. That is why we believe that the African continent must have its legitimate seats, both in the permanent and non-permanent categories of the Security Council. A reformed and enlarged Security Council with all regions and seats represented will restore confidence and enhance legitimacy of its work and our organization itself. It is also important that the institutions that we have collectively created operate independently, and their rulings respected by all countries, irrespective of their size and power. Mr. President, at the World Summit held in 2005, we made a commitment to an early reform of the Security Council in order to make it more broadly representative, efficient, and transparent, and thus to further enhance its effectiveness and the legitimacy and implementation of its decisions. As coordinator of the African Union Committee of 10 on the reform of the United Nations, I should underscore that the people of Africa are convinced more than ever before that the present geopolitical realities and the current global health pandemic compels a comprehensive reform of the Security Council to make way for the representation of Africa in the permanent category and address its underrepresentation in the non-permanent category of the Council. The growing and broad support for the common African position is evident in the recent intergovernmental negotiations as more member states reaffirm the call to correct the historical injustice done to Africa. In this vein, we would like to encourage this assembly to address this long-standing injustice by adopting Africa's demand as outlined 
in the Ezulwini Consensus and the SAC Declaration. It is deeply regrettable that reform of the Security Council and implementation of Africa's position has not been achieved. We cannot continue with a situation where over 16% of the world's population does not have a voice in decision making. This is a serious indictment to our avowed commitment to multilateralism and the basic principles of natural justice, fairness, and equity. Mr. President, as we celebrate 75 years of the existence of this democratic organization, it is a paradox that Africa is still negotiating for representation on the Security Council. Yet, much of its agenda affects the African continent. Certainly, Africa's voice on the Council will build confidence and reinforce the legitimacy of its decisions. When I addressed this August Assembly one year ago, as a member of the African Union Committee of Ten on Reform of the United Nations Security Council, I expressed my desire to see the marking of the 75th anniversary of the United Nations as an opportunity to conclude the reform of the United Nations Security Council. Namibia reiterates that the African continent wishes to see a reformed council, which is reflective of its common African position, as outlined in the Israeli consensus and the CIRTE declaration. I take this opportunity to welcome and thank those who have expressed support for the, for the common African position. As we evaluate the current status of our organization, we must reflect on the ongoing process of reforms. This process is in itself a tacit admission on our part that change needs to happen to ensure the continued relevance of the UN and its subsidiary bodies. The reform of the Security Council is a key aspect of the process and no transformation could be complete without its fundamental reform. To this end, the Kingdom of Eswatini wishes to reiterate Africa's call for permanent membership to the Security Council in accordance with the Ezulini Consensus. I'm a king, yes I'm a king, I think. I'm a king, yes I'm a king.